Well, what is going on, Shelter family? It's Pastor Jay here, closing up the series on Reckless Love. It's been such a cool week. I'm gonna tell you a story today that I haven't told in a long, long time. Um, I hope it'll impact you. Let's go. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. What's going on, guys? I'm so glad to join you here on your morning or whenever you're getting your devotion. We have spent now two weeks on the song, Reckless Love. And um, I don't know about you, but it's really brought me back to a state of reflection and appreciation. Um, I don't even think appreciation really is the correct word. Maybe allegiance, uh, maybe dedication. It's heightened everything in me as I've really processed um, phrases like, no shadow he won't light up, coming after me, right? Um, I don't deserve it, I couldn't earn it. Still he gives his self away. We've went over all these phrases and so I thought I'd tell a story today that I haven't told in a long, long time and I haven't told since I've been a father. Um, and when I contemplated it this morning, I thought um, it would be appropriate to close up this amazing series. We've talked throughout this whole time about there's always been an imbalance with the love exchange. That God has done all for us, even though we haven't earned it or turn our back away. And so I thought today we could um, illustrate this in one more way. And this would be the story of John Griffith and the Memphis Express. Many of you may have heard of this, but back in the 30s, there was a man named John Griffith who was a bridge operator for a train called the Memphis Express um, that came in from St. Louis every single day. And it must have been a bring your son to work day, um, but his young son, Greg, came with him um, to work. And imagine this young son and the father having a day of just understanding how the control room worked and how the bridge would come in and go up and down based off of ships coming into the port, uh, barges, and different trains and vehicles and all the hustle and bustle of that. So Jeff and his son were having an amazing day of just building and bonding together and they were having lunch over by the bottom of the bridge. They were over by the, uh, the area where the bridge would go up and down, which was a ways from the control room as John was telling stories to his son, all of a sudden the whistle blew, and that, that meant that the Memphis Express was on its way. So John looked at his son, knowing that he had to get up to the control room to pull the lever to make the bridge go down. He said, hey, stay here, I'll be right back. And, um, and he hustled away. As he got up to the control room to pull that lever down, he looked down and he had seen that his son Greg, somehow, some way, had slipped and fallen, and not stayed where he was and fell in between where the gears were on the bridge. In horror, John looks down and he sees the puffing smoke of the Memphis Express coming and realized there was no way for him to get back to his son in time. He had a decision to make. Save my son or do I save this passenger train filled with people? And in that moment, he made a decision that I think would probably be the hardest decision of father and he pulled the lever. In horror, he watched as his son was crushed between the gears. The bridge falls, the train comes by. And the most interesting thing I think about the story and in his depiction of the story was that there were people that were on this train on a consistent basis that knew John or knew him by seeing him every day and waved to him. He even talked about that he saw a young boy, similar to his son's age, eating a bowl of ice cream through the window or a few of the people drinking cocktails and completely oblivious to the sacrifice that he had just made. For some reason, that's the part of the story that just got to me. See, the sacrifice that John made wasn't appreciated by any way, shape, or form by those that were on the train because this is something that they do did every day, right? So there wasn't this realization of what had just happened. And I think that kind of falls to us. When we look at the song Reckless Love, like we have to understand like this is actually love that's reckless for us today. Like there is still the sacrifice that was provided by God giving of his only son still solidifies our place in God's kingdom now, still solidifies the safety that we have, still gives us the peace to go throughout a day because of Christ's death. 
yet many of us are completely oblivious. As we close up this, I want to close with Romans chapter 5, verse 8. It says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Another version says, but God proves his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Like, we have had two weeks of reflecting upon this imbalance, right? This sacrificial love. The only thing I could ask for those that are watching this this morning and have watched this throughout the whole weeks is, is it present on our mind, this reckless love? Is it appreciated? Or are we in some way, shape or form, not out of any ill intent, taking it for granted? I think for me, who's been saved, who's been in ministry, who has all that I could ever need, I minimize the sacrifice by not showing gratitude. And so I would just encourage you today to take a moment out as soon as this video ends. Bow your heart, bow your knee, do whatever you have to do, but let it come from here, not from here. The sacrifice that God gave so that you might live in eternity, that you might live in health, in freedom, in prosperity, now, that was a lot, that took a lot. And he deserves your worship, your praise, your allegiance and adoration. I love you guys, have an amazing day.